Um, my name is Jamie King. I'm from XExec, an employee benefits provider. We build global recognition programs. Um, never has a name on a uh, conference speaker list been as undeserving as this. So I'm really here to introduce Masha, who's going to properly, properly speak to you. Uh, as a case study of the program that we've been fortunate enough to build uh, with Colt Technology, uh, rolling out a global program, Masha's going to talk about some of the lessons learned uh, from that experience. Um, I will just to justify the ink on the brochure mention one lesson learned ourselves from working with Colt, in fact, but from other organizations as well. A, a year or two into any program, clients will often, organizations will ask us, okay, how do we look at, how do we measure the return on investment? How do we know that this was a good thing, the money that we've put into this recognition program? And that really depends on having had, at the very beginning of the program, before implementing some very key and specific strategic objectives and goals. And if you have them, and they'll be different for different organizations, but you need to know what they are. It sounds obvious, really, but many organizations have a very high-level, generic, we want to, we're, we're told that recognition is a good thing. We believe that it's a good thing. Let's go ahead with it. And that won't help when a year in, you then want to measure the recognition success, because you'll have some stats from the MI reports. Yes, we've got 3,000 3, uh, awards and 20,000 pounds spent, but who knows, is that good or bad? Sometimes award values, in fact, high level of reward could be a bad thing, depending on what your objectives were. So you need to know, were your, were your objectives, were they to improve morale and engagement specifically in a particular part of the organization, to empower lower level you know, non-managers to get involved in the scheme, to move away maybe from financial awards to non-financial awards. That's really, really important. Know your objectives, build the program specifics, the actual functionality and the solution and the process with those objectives in mind, and then you'll have a much better chance of, uh, of understanding the return on investment. And that's something that we learnt uh, from the program indeed with, uh, with Masha and Colt. And now Masha will tell you some uh, other lessons learned. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Judging by the green light, I think I'm just uh, five minutes less now, right? So I've got <laughs> 10 minutes to cover this now. Um, so first of all, to manage expectations, this isn't a presentation on best practice of how to implement the program. It's simply me sharing the journey we've been on at Colt. Um, and I hope you find something useful, at least thought-provoking, if you're thinking about it or if you've got an existing program already. Let me just get the clicker and go there. Um, so a little bit about Colt. Now, I was starting to think about our purpose, but actually I much prefer thinking about what you referred to earlier, is that we're really all about providing for the basic Maslow's need. You know, it's all about connectivity and connections. So as you're thinking of your mobile phones, 3Gs, 5Gs, this is what Colt is about. We stand for um, City of London Telecommunications. And if you're walking down the street, you're looking down, you'll probably see a, a metal plaque with Colt's name on it. And that's the entry point to all of the fiber we have underground. And we have a lot of fiber. We connect um, over 205 cities, lots of countries. And that fiber allows us to provide data and voice services to a lot of organizations. So there's a very good chance one of your companies has got Colt providing all of the data and connections. Now, we're small, we're 5,000 people, but we are quite complex, however. So we're spread across over 28 countries, which means that whether you've got 30 or 3,000, you, you need to do the same thing, pretty much. Um, um, so what was interesting when I joined Colt a couple of years ago, I was all geared up and ready to try and come and present to the executive committee as to why recognition is so important. I was used to building up business cases, convinced that the investment is required. When I walked into Colt, that was a slightly different picture. They already had recognition culture in place, but what was interesting is they had an internal platform that was quite old school and very invisible, so the winners would get an email or some sort of old-fashioned thing and nobody else could see it. Um, the other thing they had, they had a lot of financial awards, nothing that was peer-to-peer -peer or non-financial, and we couldn't actually understand what you were awarding the awards for. So there was a lot of confusion when I was asking, so what do you give this award for? In fact, there was a lot of sort of verbatim things like, well done, great job, but actually it wasn't linked to anything, and people didn't understand you know, how they selected what type of awards, so there was a lot of confusion. And on top of that, the back-end processes were pretty broken. You could put something through uh, expenses, you could do something there, there were vouchers floating around. So trying to get a hand on what the budget was that the organization was spending, it probably took me and my team three months to scramble from different sources to actually pull it all together to work out what we were doing. So I think we were slightly, it was a slightly unusual challenge in that there was something in, in place 
And when I walked in, we were sort of towards the end of the RFP process. So you can imagine what an unpopular decision it was for me to pause what looked like a bit of a slam dunk. You know, we, we had a provider we sort of chose. And I came in and I said, well, do we know what we're trying to go after? Back to Jamie's point. And we took a step back. We, we had some surveys with the employees. And what we worked out were three key goals for us. One was that we wanted to create a, a framework that was uh, linked to behaviours. So there were behaviours in the organisation, but we really just spent all that money never thinking that we were trying to drive behaviour with it. So that was an opportunity. Felt quite radical at the time to the leadership team, I have to be honest. Um, the other thing we wanted to do was really create an engaging platform. And for me, what was very important, and that really influenced the selection of the provider, is that I wanted a platform you didn't need to train people on. The last thing I wanted is to have training materials. I really wanted something that people go on, intuitively navigate it, and actually just use it. And we wanted it to be visible with feeds to our intranet, with a winner's wall, and we wanted it to be quite fun. Um, and the last but not least, of course, we absolutely wanted to collect all of these practices from different countries and pull it all into one stop shop, into one platform, which required for people to let go of buying pens and all sorts of practices that were happening. And we went completely electronic. So um, anything that was financial would lead you to select an e-voucher. So it would be on your mobile or anywhere else. Uh, which then created certain challenges in smaller countries, but we wanted to get rid of all of the industry of posting things and buying pens and pencils, which included do, not doing that anymore for our long service awards. And for those of you who work with works councils, you can imagine how uh, difficult it is sometimes to negotiate a change of that program and say that we're not going to do it the old way anymore. So with those three goals in mind, we started the RFP process actually again, because we really then started to measure providers with a very different set of criteria. And a long story short, we, we ended up on XExec for a couple of reasons. They, they were flexible. Now, we, we are complex, and we were sort of figuring out as we went along. And what we didn't want to do is off-the-shelf program that we just had to fit into. So we wanted somebody to work with us and create the framework as we went along, and be agile enough to add things and delete things and perhaps influence um, the direction of travel. Um, they were also truly global. For us, it was very important that the presence was everywhere. Now, we have a slightly unusual demographic in that two-thirds of our population are actually based in India. Not surprising for a, tel a telco and tech company, of course. Um, so that is a big population. But we also have small populations in a lot of uh, countries elsewhere. So we wanted somebody who could deliver with the electronic offer across all of those countries. And um, ex-exec was that team. And the other part for us was, because we were quite small, we wanted to be an important client, and we wanted to feel the relationship was close, and you know, we could work with them on a daily basis. And, and this, is, um, this certainly has worked, through, worked out for us. Now, we, it was quite a long, it was short time for us to be between sort of the RFP and the launch itself. And I'm glad to say it went quite successfully. We, we were a bit nervous, but everything went according to plan. Not without small hiccups. No, nothing ever goes perfectly, of course, but it went really well. Um, so this is just a screenshot of what it looks like. Now, <laughs> looking back, what I probably underestimated at the time is how long it would take to first create a name for the program. So, you know, you go through all these frameworks, you choose the awards. It took us ages and multiple iterations to come up with a name. We ended up going down the route of um, our ambassador. So we've got a, an engagement sort of group of people. And we put two or three options to them and just said, pick one, because otherwise we're never going to go live. So name, we ended up with Cult Inspire, which then set the tone and actually create a cultural shift that you're no longer sending something to say, well done, great job. Really, what you're, um, what you're acknowledging is something truly inspirational. So it created a subtle shift for us, which has been helpful. Um, and the other thing that took us a long time, and I know, Jamie, it was quite painful, um, I would call it pruning of the landing page. I mean, we must have had five iterations, and we kept taking things away, taking things away, back to the point of it must be only displaying what you need to know, and it should be so simple, you shouldn't be wondering what's on there. So this is probably iteration five, with about 20 different things removed to get to that place. So that took us a while. Um, I think in hindsight, I would have allowed a bit more time in the project plan for that. Um, so uh, what do we have? We have e-cards. So these are peer-to-peer, -peer, they're electronic cards. When you send a card, your manager gets a copy. Now, as a manager, I love receiving e-cards from my team because I see that recognition, so immediately I can acknowledge it. Um, so you almost get a double whammy. You know, you get something from a peer or another person, and then the manager usually sends a follow-up note saying, you know, this is brilliant news. So I think that's been great. Um, and one of the 
one of the goals I had was to, obviously, because there was never any uh, non-financial recognition, it was brand new, I really wanted to get to half of our recognition being non-financial, and I'll come on to where we are now, we're nearly there. Um, so you then had the success at Colt, so those were the financial awards, a couple of levels, but they were very much focused on the values as opposed to just doing a great job. Um, we then have quarterly awards that are higher value, they're sort of rolled up and functionally calibrated and acknowledged, and they typically are celebrated in town halls and various other places. Um, and then we also have our annual sales trip, which nominations are managed through this program. Um, so this is for our 40 top salespeople and some sales support people, and every year we sort of nominate, and, and, and that's also managed by the platform. <coughs> so what did I wish <laughs> I knew then that I know now, I guess? Well, a couple of things. Um, you know, when you go for a global program, you really do hope to deliver a consistent experience, but in reality, your Romania will never get what India gets. There is a lot to say about the scale of the company um, in the location, a lot about the maturity of the organization. In Romania, we struggle to get the same e-vouchers. You know, Amazon, unfortunately, is not everywhere. Um, so you do get into sort of situations where you're having to top and tail a little bit and wait for the country to mature for you to be able to give the selection that you would like them to have. Um, the other part that was interesting for us, before this platform, we were very sort of UK mindset, I think, um, in terms of how organization thought. We had a value in euros or pounds, and then everyone got it. So everyone in India was loving it, of course. Um, and then, of course, when we introduced this, I introduced the cost of living adjustment. And I thought this would be an uphill struggle. You know, when you go to a country with 1,300 people who really use this platform already, and you're saying, I'm going to half the value of your awards, you expect an emotional reaction. Interestingly enough, we didn't have any of that. I think secretly they were all for thinking you should have done it a while ago, actually. Um, but, you know, that we sort of overestimated the emotional response. Where we underestimated the response was about the attachment some people have to these pens and gifts and plaques and cards. And I'm still getting complaints from local management saying, well, I would still like to be able to go and buy that pen and expenses, etc." So because we removed it, this one is taking a bit longer. And we are having to almost roll in and get employees' testimonies to say, I wouldn't have liked that pen anyway. I quite like the idea of being able to go and buy something else which is more relevant to me. Um, so, and I think it's probably a little bit more with old school management that's coming through, but um, that still um, every now and then pops in my inbox, I'm afraid. Um, the other thing we found is we thought we mopped up everything that was out there. Well, no, when you launch something and you say, this is it, and you put the right governance in place, you suddenly find out that there are a few other things lurking in different countries. You know, little programs, Romania does this, or we actually do this. Um, having said that, what's been helpful is that when they do come out eventually and own up, they do ask, how can we roll this in? They want to add, so the discussions we're having is, what's already there, can you use it, how can this be you know, more relevant to you? So there is still some dialogue happening a year down the line. I think probably in about six months, we would have mopped up everything that's out there, hopefully. Uh, but we thought we did it all, but uh, no, definitely not. Um, um, the one that's very interesting for me is the, uh, because we were trying to create a cultural shift to increase the quality of recognition, one of the things that I found fascinating is tracking the amount of rejected awards. So this is when you send an award to uh, a member of your team or another person's team, and their manager looks at what you describe and says, actually, no, it's not worth the money, it's their job. And I love the fact that we've had, um, and you will see the stats later, over 750 rejected awards. And that is a testimony for me that people are really thinking about it, which was part of the challenge we were trying to solve. We were sort of throwing money at everything. And every now and then I would read them saying, well, if that's not the individual's job, what is it really? Um, so it's interesting that we're now looking at those stats and we're trying to drill down to understand when it's, where it's happening and what values it relates to. It could be a sign of us saying this is what the value of the employee is shown, but actually the manager is saying that's not what it looks like. So we're trying to get a bit more data insights for that. And one of the things that's coming up, and I'm yet to talk to Jamie about it, we're now getting requests from different parts of the business, particularly our sales organizations, saying we love this platform, it's really good, it's really intuitive, can we now add all of our ad hoc sales incentive awards into it so that we can track it and have the data insights and manage it properly so it's not as manual. So um, it's growing, which for me is a sign of success because the business are now coming to us. 
Um, so where are we here on? Um, we, um, as I said, um, one of the goals I had, which wasn't explicitly out there, because when you launch something new, you really don't know what to <coughs> expect. But I was hoping that we would have half or more of our awards non-financial. And this is pretty much where we're now at the moment. Um, we do invest quite a lot of money, as you can see, for an organization of our size. That we're now starting to think about how do we drive more non-financial awards uh, and what are the means and introducing gestures rather than, you know, um, focusing on the monetary part. It's interesting, in every organization I worked, I see a fairly similar demographic, although UK does tend to move around. Um, but, you know, India is a very large country for us, and they're the most sort of, um, <coughs> the biggest users of the program, both financial and non-financial, actually. They're really good at recognition. Uh, and it's constant, you don't need to encourage it, you don't need to do a lot of campaigns. And we haven't, we haven't done many campaigns at all, actually. There hasn't been constant nudge. We've had a couple of emails based on occasions, but we've sort of left it to be to see how our organization takes it. So this result um, is all about people just picking it up by themselves. Um, the, what's interesting about this is Asia. So we've got Japan, we've got China, I've got Hong Kong and you know lots of countries in Asia. We've had to work very hard there. Individualistic awards are not something that's culturally that popular. So we have team awards that we find that are more popular there. But yet, we still have to do a lot more work to get that acknowledgement. And it is a bit top down, so the peer part hasn't quite taken off. So we're going to zoom in there and trying to do more work and encourage that a bit more. Um, I guess, you know, what would be the interesting facts here? And, and we've had 11,000 recognition moments, both financial and non-financial, and half, nearly half of it is non-financial, actually. So we're nearly there. Um, and uh, now we can start setting some targets and goals and have much more meaningful aims that we've had one year of practicing it. So I'm doing well for time. There's time for questions. So if you have any questions, I'm very happy to answer them. <coughs> 